subscribe for more shitty content. And like the video so I get more views. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Esports Money, ZSM, Mac10, whatever you want to call me, and welcome to my introduction to Maresca Sunbreeze, the Dark Willow. Also, we lull now, boys. So, anyway, this hero is a is boring, anyway. intelligence hero that can be played in a core or support role, in my opinion, in my <laughs> belief. I think the hero will be played as a core in most situations, and I think you should think of this hero the same way you think of Zeus. I think that's a very good way to think. It's an intelligence hero that really likes attack range, or spellcast range, spell lifesteal, intelligence for the sake of dealing additional magic damage, but we'll get into it. Uh, so, her Q is called Bramble Maze, and you can think of it kind of like Pit Lord's ability. Enjoy. So it creates this big AoE, and unlike Pit Lord's ability, if I walk here, which is technically in the AoE I cast it, I won't get stunned. I have to actually physically touch these brambles to get the root effect. However, those brambles, there are eight of them, and they last for 15 seconds. They last for a very long time. They also do damage, a significant amount of damage. At level 4 they do 250 magical damage and they root you for 2.5 seconds. Level 1 they have a cooldown of 40 seconds and it decreases by 5 seconds for each additional point you put into the ability down to a 25 second cooldown at level 4 with a ranging with a scaling mana cost starting at 140 and ending at 170 at level 4. Speaking of magic damage, this hero is entirely magic damage based to the extent that a BKB fully counters pretty much everything this hero can do, um, period. A BKB, while you're under the effect of BKB, this hero is a, just, it's a big creep. That's all it is. Seriously, everything is blocked by BKB. <coughs> ability number two is called Shadow Realm. It is her W ability, and it causes her to recede into the shadows. So... She turns all dark, and she can't be targeted during this, but I believe she is still uh, targetable by AoE. So she can't be hit by single target abilities, but like Coddles, uh, Blast, I mean anything that's AoE is probably going to affect her. I, be I, I believe here, that's how the ability works. But she doesn't take additional damage, it's not like ethereal. So what this does is it makes her untargetable while she's under the effect of it, and it lasts for 5 seconds, and when she, if she right clicks to break it, kind of like a right click to break invisibility damage buff, so like Shadow Blade and uh, Bounty Hunter's passive, abilities like that, it does additional damage and it also gives her additional range. So it's 600 additional range at all levels and the max damage is 120, the maximum damage for waiting to cast it at level 1 and it scales up to 360. Again, it's, it's of course magical damage. And it maxes out after three seconds, so it's a very easy ability to land, hence the we, we lull now, boys. So, you see me? It la three seconds, you get the explanation point, and then at five seconds it goes away. So, three seconds to max damage, and then you have a two-second window to cast it for the nuke, and because it gives you that explanation point, you now know, whoop, I have two seconds to cast this, and you have this plus your base attack range, which is 475. You have a 1,075 attack range with this nuke, and you have three seconds to land it. If you max this in lane, you will do the max damage and land the ability every single time you cast it. Uh, it does have a pretty long cooldown, though. 30 seconds at level 1, and it scales linearly to 12 seconds at level 4. Uh, so at level 4, 12 second cooldown, 100 mana cost, and 360 maximum damage. It's a pretty strong ability, I think, for the lane, and I think it's something that people are going to want to put a lot of points into early, just because of the fact that you get so much more damage out of additional points. Versus the Q is kind of a value point proposition, because you get... The Bramble isn't really... The Bramble Maze really isn't intended to grab people as much as it is to deter people from going in an area, and you have the same placement duration and the same number of brambles at all levels. The only thing that you're getting is additional cooldown, additional damage, and a lowered, or additional damage, additional duration, and a shortened cooldown uh, with additional points into it. So this is a value point. This is much less a value point, put more points into it. 
Her E is called Curse Crowned. I personally believe it'll be one of her least popular abilities, uh, but I'm probably wrong about this. What it does is it basically plants a debuff on you that after 4 seconds, the debuff goes off and enemies are stunned in a 325 second duration around you, uh, or radius around you, uh, with a 3.5 second duration. So if I go over here, uh, yep, creep sleep now, but we'll talk about that in another video. So after 4 seconds, it goes off and it stuns everybody. So it's a pretty long stun, it's a pretty Let's hefty fly. stun, and it's only 100 mana at level You're 1 with an 18 second cooldown. So the cooldown's not very high, and the mana cost is reasonable considering it's a high mana intelligence hero. Uh, the problem is, and the stun's pretty long, at 2 seconds level 1 with 0.5 seconds for every additional point you put into it. The problem is with 4 seconds of delay, you know, you, it's that's like 4 seconds in Dota time is 10 years. Now think about how long we've waited for Your this patch. But 4 seconds is enough time that an enemy hero can get away from their allies and just take the damage alone, get behind their tower. This is a setup that is very good at punishing people for overextending, but it's not something that you can really use to jump out on someone when you're overextending because if they have they have 4 seconds to get out of it. Her ultimate is involving her pet wisp that lives in her thing right here, her lantern. Uh, what it does is it gives you two new abilities, and one of them is called Bedlam. And if you are in the AoE that's on my screen right no now, which moves with you, so the, the actual AoE is way bigger than the visual. Um, so if you're, in, if you're in this AoE around the hero, which follows the hero around, you take a damage instance every quarter of a second, it's magical damage, of course, and goes 75, 150, and 225. And again, this of course scales with additional intellect because it's magic damage and it's spell damage. It lasts for 4 seconds, has a 20, a tw a 20 seconds is nothing for this ability, 20 second cooldown, and a 100, 150, and 200 mana cost, depending on how many points you have into it. And the only thing you get is the attack damage increases per point, so uh, again 75 and then 150 and 225 at level 3. It's blocked completely by BKB, but this is a hero that you absolutely have to build BKB against because this ability is freaking nuts. If you are in under the effect of some ability, let's say like Black Hole, where you are locked down for 4 seconds, if you have a 5 man Black Hole and then Dark Willow walks in, which again, 20 seconds, you're probably going to have the ability off cooldown. You're going to walk in and you're going to do 34 to 3600 magic damage on everyone under the effect of the black hole. So it's magic damage, so there's a lot, a lot, a lot of reductions going on there. There's a lot of magic resistance in this game. Just just from the get-go without any items itemization towards it, but it's still a massive nuke, and movement speed's probably going to be pretty big on this hero too, because as long as you can keep up with somebody, you're going to continue to do that damage. Her other ultimate is called Terrorize, and it's boring as hell, and you do that. It's got a pretty long cast range, and if you're in that AoE, when that lands, you get affected by fear. So, because it has a projectile, it does have a bit of a travel time, so if you see it coming, you can blink out of it knowing it's coming for you. And what it does is it just basically works like Lone Druid's Fear. You run towards your fountain if you're affected by it for 4 seconds. It has a 180 or a 60 second cooldown depending on the level of it. It does not pierce spell immunity, so it's blocked by BKB. It has 150 mana cost at all levels. You cannot use... Uh, this uh, you cannot use either ability while the other is active. So if I press, if I use my Bedlam, which does all the damage, I can't use Terrorize. And this is so that you can't terrorize someone, know exactly the path they're going to walk, and then hug them and Bedlam them to death, uh, and vice versa. So when Terrorize is out, you can't use this ability until that rendezvous with, until you connect to that Wisp that comes back to you. But... I also don't know if if an enemy is under the effect of Terrorize, so let's say if you do that and then you blink so that you immediately have your Wisp back, I think you can use Bedlam again. So a Blink Dagger is probably going to be pretty important for the hero. If you have all that movement speed where you can keep up with someone, you can actually 
pretty sure this works to where once you catch the wisp again, it doesn't matter if people are going to be effective terrorized. Terrorize is technically over because you caught the wisp. So then you can terrorize Bedlam combo, and that makes this hero fucking broken as shit. So her talents. Uh, level 10, plus 25 cast range, or plus 20 damage. Level 15 is plus 40 movement speed, or plus 90 GPM. Level 15, that's a huge talent because you want movement speed so you can catch people with Bedlam, and you want 90 GPM because it's awesome. Level 20 is plus 300 Shadow Realm max damage, or 10% spell lifesteal, both of which are quite good. Uh, and then level 25 is plus, terrorized, plus one second terrorized duration, so instead of running for four yeah, seconds toward their fountain, they'll run for five. Attack. And plus 200 attack speed, but considering you don't really do right clicks, probably not going to be that popular, and you don't have a lot of right click damage, and right attack, attack speed doesn't really scale with any of your abilities at all, period. Terrorized duration is probably going to be more popular. So level 25 talent's pretty boring, but the rest are sick, like really Your awesome. Uh, so attack. thank you guys so much for watching, and stick around for additional content related to patch 7.07, The Dueling Fates. I'll see you guys next time.